just so if you don't know me, my name is Ramses Out. Uh, I live in the Netherlands in Amsterdam, and I run a little website called Romestack, which is basically a knowledge base for anything Rome research related. And I'm really interested in workflows, in tools, plugins, like basically nerding out about Rome research. So um, the there's a membership community, uh, which is almost 300 people strong, where we try to figure out uh, how to do things in Rome. And I call myself the chief uh, Rome nerd. <laughs> So uh, it's it's basically my job. I see it as my job to figure out stuff. Uh, if, if people have questions um, about their workflows, how to do things in Rome, I am basically uh, one of the, the people who will help you to, to get it done. So uh, my background is in corporate IT and consulting. So this is what I've been doing for years. And now uh, the internet has given me the opportunity to do this full time. So that, that is basically the background about Rome Stack, if you don't know it already. Uh, today's session is about journaling. And if you, if you look at uh, knowledge work, so for me, Rome Research is basically my core tool to do knowledge work. So anything that has to do with ingesting information, uh, elaborating on it, and then doing something else with it. So in my case, the knowledge work I do is I learn, for example, about smart blocks, which is a plugin, and then I try to distill the essence. So for people who are not technical, I try to distill uh, how do you go over setting up uh, a smart blocks uh, template, for example. So that that is what I do. Uh, when I was still in, in corporate consulting, often it was like uh, um, I, I did a lot of system uh, uh, analyses. So I had to look at different tools, for example, for uh, recruitment. I, I used to uh, do consulting and recruitment and I had to compare different software tools. So I had to go through their documentation. I had to learn about the documentation, the possibilities, the, the limitations of different software tools and map it onto our workflows. And that I use Rome for that as well. So I would analyze uh, uh, different sources inf of information. So that is, what I basically mean with knowledge work. So if, if if you think you're a knowledge worker, you're probably one. So you work with knowledge. And I believe that journaling is a key tool to become a better knowledge worker, to gain clarity, to gain mental space, to think about hard problems. So um, I'm going to collapse this. I should have done it already. Um, so today we're going to talk about why journaling, why, why you should journal, why you should use Rome for journaling, what are smart blocks. I'm going to only briefly touch on what are smart blocks and then how to use smart blocks or how I use smart blocks to journal. And I'm going to give you a few templates uh, and I'm going to show you how, how to create those templates to trigger yourself to journal throughout the day. So journaling itself is not very complicated except for you have to do it. So I think that is the key to actually do it, to actually write down what's in your head. So uh, I think for many, especially for me, it's a challenge to do that consistently because I simply tend to forget I have to journal. Um, or even if I'm stuck in my work, it's not always my first instinct to grab pen and paper or open Rome to think through a problem. But by prompting yourself and and smart blocks is one way to prompt yourself by prompting yourself continuously journaling can become a habit so that's why i called the session effortless effortless journaling with rome research and smart blocks um interrupt me if you have questions or comments or whatever i will have a look at the chat every now and then um let's see before we get started all right let's get started so why journal i'm going to use rome to present this, I haven't created slides. It's not really important uh, because what counts is the, the templates that I will show you in a bit. But first I want to set up um, why you should actually bother about this. So I have uh, written down four reasons that I have to journal. So for, for me, it's really to offload my thinking. Uh, I like my head is too, too full of ideas always, and it goes like in all directions. So if I don't write down 
my my strength of thought, it's very difficult to to dig deeper into into what I'm thinking about because it's all over the place. So my my thinking in my head tends to be very wide instead of deep. Whereas if I write, I can dive deeper into what I'm thinking about, which helps me to gain clarity about my ideas, uh, about my insights, about lessons that I learned. Uh, it helps me to reflect on what I did. So I, I like to reflect on my day uh, at, the end, at the end of the day and to think back about what went well, what didn't go well, and how I can do things differently next time. So um, that is basically giving myself feedback and, and holding myself a mirror. And that in itself, I've noticed, helps me to reduce anxiety because I often feel anxiety when I, I have this sense of losing control in my life. That, uh, and, and when do I have that? Because when, when things are not really clear. So what is on my plate? What, what do I have to pay attention to? What responsibilities do I have in this time period? It could be this week, this month, today. Um, and by writing it down, I give it some structure. I give it attention. I bring it to my attention, what I need to focus on. And journaling really helps me with that. So if you're willing to share, I would love to hear if you journal, why do you journal? Put it in the chat, unmute yourself. I'm going to tape. Take a sip of water. Hi, this is Ken. Hi, Ken. Yeah, hi. I, uh, I journal to not just to get the thoughts out of my head, but to try to put myself on the right track. Yeah, to focus so your attention. I yeah, so I'm making an intentional day. So I start out that way. And then at the end mm -hmm. of the day, I just see if I did it, if I met any of my expectations. Forget all, any. Exactly. Yeah. Doesn't we we don't have to be perfect. If if only we we hit like one thing, for example, we, we said I had to, to do, right? Yes, exactly that. Exactly. Yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah, I do that as well. Uh, and I will show in a bit how I do that in my uh, note to my next day self, which I learned from Tracy, who's also in the call. Um, and then it's interesting that you say it's like to to focus your attention on your attention on your intention, right? Uh, what, what what you want to achieve? Yes. And yeah, and I like to do that as well by like, and again, I will show this in a bit to send myself uh, a, like a message in a bottle. So at the end of today, I will write myself a note for tomorrow. And that way I can continue something I've been thinking about, for example. Yeah, that's brilliant. Nice. Thank you for sharing. Let's see. There's some things in the chat. Let's see. Uh, Nick, to clarify muddy thoughts. Yeah, muddy thoughts. That is that's a good term. Uh, Andrew, when I'm frust uh, feeling frustrated, overwhelmed, I journal to gain, uh, gain clarity. Yes. Sounds, feels very familiar. Um, Esteban, I do journaling because it helps me to understand the why of my anxiety. It also helps me to focus on the tasks I need to do. So this, like, like what Ken said, it's like focusing your attention on what you need to do. So... You know what's so great about this? I feel like I'm not alone. <laughs> and I hopefully you also feel like you're not alone reading this. Like, oh, you're not the only one who has anxiety and who uses journaling to get through it. Well, me neither. Uh, some people say it helps um, to get through procrastination, to get back on track. Andrew says, to, uh, to, let's see to understand the next steps and what might be blocking me. Yes. Um, so I, I have ADHD and I know many people who have ADHD where journaling helps to identify the beginning, middle and end of tasks. It's so easy to feel overwhelmed. Like one of the symptoms I, I would call them of ADHD is that everything feels important and it has to be done right now. So, but there's a logical sequence if you have a project. So journaling, writing things down 
least in me, it, it gives me the feeling of, okay, at least it's written down. I don't need to worry about this. I can now focus on one thing at a time. Because normally when it's just in my head, I cannot focus on one thing at a time because I'm afraid I will forget like the two other things that are required for this project. But if I write it down, I have it. I have it. So I can take it one step at a time. Um, thank you, Tracy, for summarizing. Yeah. So summarizing the comments here. And Tracy sees people journal to, for focus, to gain clarity, to crush negative emotions, to promote mental health. Uh, <laughs> and it seems like there are more people with ADHD. And I think it's not only people with ADHD who have these feelings of overwhelm because there's so much information coming at us that I think many people who like who don't have uh, uh, ADHD maybe uh, from a genetic uh, uh, um, origin, but it's just because people are so overwhelmed by information and distractions that many people have the same symptoms, I think. So writing things down, even if you don't have ADHD, but you have a very busy job or life, helps you to structure things. And I think it also helps you to weed out the, the unnecessary parts. Because like, I'm really good at creating to-do lists, but by writing them down, I can also get rid of many things that I think, oh, these are ultimately not very important. So um, I already see some people sharing in the chat why they use Rome for journaling. Uh, these are my main two reasons. I think many people uh, have these reasons and I'm not going too deep into this re revisiting uh, part. I am mostly going to focus on the first part. So Rome makes journaling or writing entries frictionless because of data notes page. And as we'll see, because of tools like smart blocks, which like one push at the button and you're ready to journal, as you'll see in a bit. And then if you tag appropriately, which we'll also see in a bit how I do it, uh, you, it's easy to revisit your notes. And why would you like to, why would you want to revisit your notes? Uh, my belief is you don't necessarily need to because the act of writing is already cathartic. So just getting something off your chest is enough. Ha maintaining, like using your daily notes page as a scratch pad of what's relevant today. Uh, I think that that also helps. So uh, revisiting old entries can be very interesting for like spotting patterns, especially if you use a, a, a an extension, a browser extension like um, Rome Portal. If you go to roamstack.com and you look in the knowledge base for Rome Portal, you will find an article basically showing you how you can use um, um, this tool by uh, Darren Kapila uh, to spot like patterns throughout time. So that, that can be very interesting, especially if you tag your emotions. So uh, another interesting resource to check out also in the knowledge base is the Roman Journals Summit where Matt Rockwell, um, who, is, uh, who also runs Rome Book Club, shows how he tags his emotions and then can, he can go back into his journal entries in time to spot patterns um, of, of specific emotions. Let's see the chat. Mm. Oh. There is uh, someone in the chat sharing Pethanon um, that he's helping his uh, son to journal in Rome and that it helps him to, uh, to focus and learn at school. Yeah, that's so great. Um, Esteban also started to find patterns. So he started out just writing, free writing, and then after time, I started to find patterns. Mm. Oh, and this is a very interesting comment by Andrew. So he says in the chat, uh, revising notes can be great if you journal about making a decision. So a decision-making journal. Um, and then once you know how it turned out, you can review um, how you were correct or incorrect and what mistakes you made. So this is so 
good to also update your mental models. So uh, a mental model is basically your understanding in your head of how reality, how external reality works and what, what is effective behavior. So I don't know, something uh, um, in your, uh, like in a relationship, maybe you, your, your partner is very cranky in the morning. Your mental model of your relationship is don't discuss important things in the morning. <laughs> But then maybe you had a, a, a very good conversation after a cup of coffee uh, in the morning and you journaled about it. And then you think, hmm, maybe. And this is, this is not to promote manipulation. This is to learn from how, do you, how can you make life as good as possible for yourself and others around you. And I like to do that as well. So, for example, I've noticed that like, I fast, so I do intermittent fasting. But when I have a meeting um, while I'm fasting or toward the end of my fast, it, it doesn't tend to be good. <laughs> so I tend to eat before having a meeting because I've noticed because I journal after meetings and I write, for example, oh, I was a uh, very, sh uh, a little bit grumpy or I don't know if this is the correct word, short with, with someone. And uh I wonder if this has to do with uh, me having fasted for uh, 18 hours. And then I start to experiment with having just a, a bite of chocolate and a little bit of peanut butter before a call and how I am then, how, I'm, how my uh, energy is then. So for example, now I had a nice Thai coconut uh, milk soup before, before this call and now I'm happy. <laughs> so these are all lessons that I, that I gained, uh, that I learned through, through journaling. Um, all right. So 20 minutes in time to get to smart blocks. Um, I don't know if people are completely not familiar with smart blocks, put it in the chat. I am not going too deep today. Um, I will be sharing a few links in a bit, but basically smart blocks are a powerful template plugin. So if you if you know Rome slash templates, so you have Rome slash templates. And uh, for example, this daily template, oh, by the way, this is something smart block. So I can run a daily template. Let's do demo it here, just by using the double semicolon. And then once I select one, it will paste those blocks. Uh, so this is the, the built-in template engine of, uh, of Rome. It's not very powerful. It's very useful if you just have plain text templates. But smart blocks are smart. So they can do a few things. And we'll have a look at them um, right now. And uh, do know this is a third-party plugin. So if you're not comfortable with running plugins, um, and why wouldn't you be comfortable running a plugin is for example, it, it does add a potential point of failure. So you are importing code from an uh, unknown source into your graph. So if you have very personal things in your graph, maybe smart blocks are not the way to go. Maybe you just need to use some simple, um, Rome templates, because there, yeah, there will be external code loaded into your graph. And it's not a huge concern, especially for me, it's not a huge concern because I basically use journaling for things. Well, you, you cannot blackmail me with this information. So I'm not really concerned. Uh, I just use it for about, oh, I, I, I read this article or I wrote this outline and now I want to work on this uh, uh, task and this is one what I want to achieve. It's, it's not, those are not business secrets or anything or, or personal information uh, of people, but do realize this is a cloud solution. And even if you have, if you run the local graph in Rome, Running plugins is a, a, a tiny, 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 but it's still a risk. Just realize that. Just, and I know people who say, oh, well, I'm not going to use plugins. You can still use some of these templates, um, like the contents, but not all the features. Like the, 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 the making it frictionless and effortless, that is what smart blocks do. So without further ado, let's actually have a look at the smart blocks. Um, 
So, oh, by the way, before we get started, to install smart blocks, there is this thing called Rome.js. Like I said, these are plugins. And if you go to the website roamds.com, this is a repository of free plugins. Um, I dare to say they're safe. I know David. He's a stand-up guy. Uh, I've checked the code. So all, even what I what I said about look out for, for, for plugins still counts for OMGS. If you don't trust David, don't install his plugins. Um, and to install the plugin, um, in this case, we are using um, SmartBlocks, which is a standalone plugin. Let's see. I don't see it here. Maybe it's at the bottom. Yeah, it's at the bottom. Um, this version is still in beta. So it's an open beta. You can already use it. Um, I am using Rome 42 right now. So Rome 42 is actually a suite of plugins of which SmartBlocks is a part. Um, if you want, you can use the standalone plugin. Just realize that not everything works yet. Uh, because this will be the version two of the smart blocks, which contains some really cool stuff. And I will show it in a bit what's possible. For example, automatically populating your daily notes page at a specific time of day, uh, which means if you log into row, your daily notes page or your, your, your journaling template is already waiting for you. Um, and is it worth switching to smart blocks from Rome 42? I would say no, just if you're okay with Rome 42, how the smart blocks work in Rome 42, just use Rome 42 because once the new version of smart blocks is ready, like the, the better improved, faster, automated, more automated smart blocks, that will automatically become part of Rome 42. So you will automatically receive the update. So I'm going to show you to install Rome 42, which is very simple. You go to the Rome 42 page, you click copy extension, it's copied to your clipboard now. And then I will remove this just to show you how to do it. I like to nest it underneath the plugin name. It's not mandatory. It's just for, to make it clear for myself. And I just paste what I just, what I copied from the page. I click away. And now the only thing I have to do is uh, yes, I know what I'm doing. Uh, this is a warning because, like I said before, Rome knows that if you run a plugin, you're running other people's code, which over which they have no control. So uh, you need to be able to, they say, read JavaScript code. Um, Rome, again, Rome 42 is a community project, lots of eyes on the code. I trust it. All right, to enable it, I click that button. And then to make sure that uh, everything is loaded correctly, I refresh the graph. Um, if you use text expander, should you uh, switch from, from text expander to smart blocks? Um, I switched from text expander to smart blocks in Rome. I still use text expander in, in other tools. Uh, and why do I do this? Well, I will show you because smart blocks enable me to add buttons to a workflow. So I will try to explain this as simply as possible. You see many, many workflows here. So First thing to learn, a, a smart block template is called a workflow. So it's not a template. It's not just pasting text on the page. It's actually a workflow that it that can do so many things. So a smart block can randomly fetch a block from a specific page or can find all the to-dos that are, that are tagged with the date before today, for example. So all overdue to-dos or it can open a page in the, in the sidebar and another page in your main window. So with one predefined workflow, you can do like 10, 20 steps at once. 
Um, and that's why smart lock template is actually called a workflow. So my daily workflow consists of three buttons and these three buttons each trigger another workflow. So what workflows do they trigger? We look at this code and um, I will put this code in the chat in a bit, like all the code. And uh, if you're a RomeSec member, just drop me uh, your email address and I will add you to the graph. Uh, so, because this is the RomeSecers graph. But to get back to the, to the template, this button, it triggers the, the, the workflow note for myself, as you can see here. So the button text is fetch note from yesterday self. And then the command is run this 42 smart block called note for myself. And what is this note for myself? Um, I have, uh, oh, by the way, you create a, a workflow by, uh, uh, or smart block workflow by tagging a parent block with hashtag 42 smart block. And this is all in the documentation, in the run 42 documentation. So hashtag 42 smart block followed by the name, just the, the same way the Rome temp slash templates one works. And then nested underneath is basically the, the workflow. And you can nest it as far as you want. So if you want to go 20 levels deep with indentation, that's possible. I, I wouldn't recommend it <laughs> with the current version because it's a little bit finicky, uh, but with the next version, it's super stable. So go well. Um, so this button actually triggers this workflow. If I click it and I'll demonstrate it in a bit, actually I can demonstrate it right now. Um, sorry. So I'm going to open this in the sidebar. I'm just going to run the daily template so you can see what I do. So the trigger to run a a uh, smart blocks template, it's JJ. And then daily to look for the daily template, I hit enter, it will paste those blocks. And then if I click it, it will look, and it, it's, it's a little bit slow. Again, this will be fast, super fast in version two, but it will go into my graph, fetch the note that I wrote on yesterday's daily notes page, and it will show it on the uh, in the template. So this is basically how I start. So this is how I start my morning. I have my Rome open, and this is what I log into. So the first message is a message I wrote to myself. And what do I write? I well I've. This is a dummy text because normally I write to myself in Dutch, <laughs> my native language. But I, so I greet myself, good morning, Wednesday, Ramses. Uh, actually, this should be Thursday, uh, uh, Ramses. Anyway, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday was, uh, was a good day, made progress on some new Ro Rome sent content about journaling and using Rome to learn new skills. Why do I write this? It's to give myself a pet on the back. I'm very highly self critical. So, saying something positive to myself, saying something, dude, you struggle with like resistance and uh, procrastination, everything, but you get shit done. So if I tell myself that, I believe in myself. And I like the more I tell myself that I'm someone who produces, the more I become that person. Um, and then I already look ahead of what's to come. So I give myself advice. Um, so Wednesday, well, Thursday will be uh, will be a busy day with calls. So make sure you do as much creative work uh, before. You know how exhausted you are after calls, so you turn out whatever you can before. Again, this is a lesson I learned rep by by re journaling repeatedly after calls. That I was like, oh, I was so exhausted. Then I would write a note to my next day self, and I would write, had many calls today, didn't produce shit. I feel bad about it. Why is this? oh, wait, I don't have energy after calls. Maybe I should do creative work before calls. Maybe I should do calls at the end of the afternoon. So I've actually changed my entire daily schedule to having calls not before three in the afternoon because then I can first have creative time. So these are all lessons I learned through journaling, just through this daily snippet of telling myself how the day went 
and giving myself some advice uh, for the future, the near future. So this is the, the first button I press in the morning. Let's see the chat. Mm. Nick has a question about those buttons. I will show you in a bit. Um, then Esteban says, the principles are great besides the technical aspects. Yes, it's not about the tactile uh, toys. It's about actually a process. And the only thing that enabled me to turn this into a technical uh, workflow was because I first had to process. I was already, I was doing this all, always on paper. So in the morning I would write, I would read the entry from the day before in my journal, would write a new journal entry in the morning. And then at the evening I would review my page from the morning, write a new page. So that I did this on paper for years um, before I adopted it uh, in Rome. And um, let's see. And okay, let's continue. Um, quickly, how to create this button? Um, so I use a command, a, uh, a smart block command. So I write JJ again. I write button. You can see this little gear in front of um, in front of this this name. So it's this is like a predefined workflow which is already exists in, uh, in SmartBlock. So when I click it, it will ask me. So here in the bottom right, it says the button uh, syntax is the caption the, and the name of the SmartBlock. I don't really need to be bothered about this because here I just have the prompt asking me what to do. So what's the name of the caption of the button? So fetch note, I'm going to call it. And then what is the name of the smart block? Well, the name of the smart block is note for myself. So just write note for myself. And somehow it did a dick again. I am, yeah, okay. So fetch note and notes for myself. All right, I mispressed. So I did end or home, I pressed by accident. So what it does is it basically creates the button for me. If I click away from the block, it will, it will uh, I can click it and it will basically run the same thing again. It's a little bit slow because my computer is slow. All right. So this is uh, what I start my day with. Then, oh, and by the way, I should explain this button because it triggers another workflow. So when I click this button, write a note to my next day self, I trigger this workflow, meta.ntnds. Um, this is basically, and the, the name doesn't matter. You can name this any way uh, you want. This is just a convention I have. But what this does is it uses, again, a smart block command to put tomorrow's date in the, in the parent block. So this will dynamically populate with tomorrow's date. And then I use in the query to fetch the note from my previous day self. So you can see this, this embed or this command fetches all blocks that uh, are dated, or sorry, all blocks that contain the tag NTNDS. So that's this one, NTNDS, and NTDS, with a date between yesterday and today. So that's only today's date. Um, and so dynamically, I add the date here. And sorry if I become too technical here. Uh, just watch the recording, which I will send you to uh, to to figure out what this exactly does. But this is dy it dynamically inserts tomorrow's date, and then this dynamically looks for this 
block to embed this entire block. So that is what this button does. Uh, Bill, I've just shown the, the button to create the button. Um, again, just type JJ button and then use that workflow. All right, interstitial journal. What is an interstitial journal? It's basically, these are journal entries I use throughout the day, just like what Ken des uh, described to um, focus my attention. So it's part to offload my thinking and part to focus my attention to the next task. So what do I write? I write, these are, this is my entry. So first off, when I click this new entry button, this template is triggered. So first of all, a time stamp is created. Then I have a little space to write about what I've done. Then I have a little space to write what I'm going to do. And then I have a little space to write about what I want to achieve. Like this is shorthand for myself. Uh, I've done is basically what I've worked on the previous work session. What I will work on means I'll, I'll do. And I want is the, the outcome I have in mind. So I try to visualize my outcome. Um, if we look at the, the daily template here on the right, if I click Let's Interstitial Journal, here, this template at the, at the left, Interstitial Journal 1, is, uh, is triggered. Why do I do that as a button? Why do I have this button to trigger Interstitial Journaling? Because, for example, on Saturday and Sunday, I rarely Interstitial Journal. In my personal graph, I have the smart block set up in a way that each morning, automatically, the daily template is pasted on uh, my daily notes page. If I would insert it like this, I would have empty, uh, empty entries. So I would have in my interstitial journal linked references, I would have days that I only have this button. Whereas if I don't click it, it doesn't turn up, this doesn't turn up in the linked references. So only when I click it, it becomes linked. Now I can click new entry and I get the current time, I get these questions, and then the cursor is already in the right place to start writing. So this is completely frictionless. I hit new entry and I can start typing well after two seconds that it runs. Again, this will be different in the future. It will be an instant. Let's see if there are questions about this workflow so far. I thought you would like this, uh, Tracy. <laughs> hey, Ramses, I'm really interested in what types of insights you get when you, when you do this consistently. Like what are the surprises that happen when you open this and and respond to yourself? Yeah, good question. Um, so I don't read back the entries past today. So at the end of the evening or at the end of the day, I will go through my entries and have a look. And this is basically where I learned, for example, uh, oh, I became distracted by Twitter tweets three times today, for example. So these are just, and this will be captured in my notes to my next day cell. So uh, just keep keep Twitter up all, all day and uh, plan, plan an hour in the evening, for example. So those are little lessons. Um, that is as far as the, the, like the patterns and the lessons go. As for the immediate effect, I would say it helps me to put a pin in my thinking. So what I often do is I, when I write, for example, I've done and something is still on my mind, I will, I will tag maybe the project I've just worked on. And then um, I have my musings, for example, just by random thoughts. I, I also have a musings button, which we'll get to in a bit, but this is basically what I've worked on. This is still in my mind. This is what, what, 
what I want to work uh, next on. And I ask myself, in what context do I want to see this entry back? So maybe I've worked on Friday, I finished work on something, and I know, okay, on Monday, I want to revisit this. I tag it with Monday's date, and then uh, maybe weekly planning. So I will know that when I run my weekly uh, planning template, it will show up. If I have a project I'm working on, I often have a query set up on the project page, which I use as an inbox. And uh, the same way I use, oh wait, I'm not in my personal graph. Well, so I use queries as an inbox because I have on that page, I have maybe the project name, a uh, query set up with the project name and uh, notes or, or ideas, for example. And then when I'm working on that project, I see in my queries, I see all the mentions of my journal entries about that project. And then we'll just remove some of the metadata once I've processed it so it doesn't show up in the query anymore. It's a little bit abstract, I know, when I describe it. Um, so that's really to put a pin in my thinking. And then the other benefit I really notice is that if I write about what I'm going to work on and what I want to achieve, it's more likely I will actually do it then. So when I'm then distracted, there's this idea that I, then at some point, like maybe after two minutes of scrolling Twitter, I'm like, oh wait, no, I was working on something. And then it's like, I only need to read back what I was supposed to work on. It's like, oh yeah, okay, go back. So that is basically how I use it as a forcing function to focus, I would say. Okay, I hope that was, they made sense. I see someone has their hand raised, Esteban. Uh, you can unmute yourself if you want, if you want to comment. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think you're, you're answering my question for what you just say. Um, when I, I'm struggling with, what you're saying and mm -hmm. i'm also journaling i have the the time stamps in there and then i got distracted because hashtag adhd and the ideas came and i've just mm -hmm. been working for like one minute in my task mm -hmm. um so what i did yesterday was to okay i have an idea i'll mm -hmm. write it there and then i'll go back to my task that mm -hmm. happens like every one or two minutes uh for mm -hmm. the first 10 minutes and then I then I can work but mm. my fear is the fear quoting um, of missing that information or, or action item so my question was how do you tag them I'm yeah. trying to have like hashtag this is related to this topic that I want to write but should I hashtag write hashtag topic hashtag do later control enter for the to do box how do yeah. you manage your ideas and things you want to do when you're doing this exercise great question um and like you said i can only show what i do so you mentioned a few things should i tag it with this like a to do or a later or revisit um you should tag it with whatever is part of your process. So if you tag something as hashtag later, but you don't have a process to check your hashtag later page, it's not going to work. So I have a few approaches. Um, first of all, random thoughts. And I think this is a good segue to, to clarify the, the, the difference between an interstitial journal, how I use it, and just a random idea. So I use my interstitial journal to focus from one uh, task to another. So from one context to another, to offload my thinking and to consciously switch my thinking. Um, I have random ideas like you all the time. So I have this musings button, and this is very simple. It's similar to the interstitial journal, but it's just a timestamp and then a writing prompt. So that is what I use for random ideas. And again, I tag it with, with uh, projects, with dates. And I think this is where we get to the context where you want to sh have something show up. So I have a weekly ritual where I plan my week. 
on Monday. I do it religiously. So if I, if something is for later, I don't want to be bothered with it right now. I need to do something with this. Like I have a content idea. Well, first of all, I have a, I have a template set up for content ideas that that shows up on my Rome stack page. So in my personal graph, I have a Rome stack page with queries that when I need an idea to write content, I have one specific place to go to where the query is with all the ideas. I can show that in a bit. Um, if it's not tied to a specific project, but to a moment in time, I use the dates function. So for example, uh, I would write, just uh, thought of uh, uh, something to discuss with Tracy, uh, discuss in our meeting on, and then I do, for example, tomorrow. And then it's tagged with tomorrow's date. And then here, uh, see, the idea is as whatever. So now I go to tomorrow, and in tomorrow's linked references, and I think I've mentioned this before uh, in, in like also in spaces, try to leverage your linked references as much as possible. So really use the dates function. Like yesterday, hash, uh, slash yesterday, uh, sorry, slash tomorrow or slash today or slash date and then pick a specific date. Because that way you can use your, your linked references again as an inbox. Uh, to show yourself, okay, this is what you should focus on. And as I start my day on my daily notes page and I see my, uh, my, my daily template and then underneath my linked references, I have my daily notes page is basically my, my dashboard for that day. Uh, in my personal graph, I actually use the daily, uh, sorry, the, the linked references of each day for my to-do list. I can show that, um, but I would need to stop sharing and then switch. I will, I'll show that in a bit. Uh, Tracy, you have your hand raised. Yeah, I'm, I'm fascinated by this. I typically will create a task item and then tasks end up getting overloaded. But you're talking about employing queries plus not Plus, just doing a simple review of the next day rather than create tasks and setting up query systems. And I think that's one of the things that's missing from my journaling game, because what you're showing us is that when we dump stuff off our minds, it creates action items for our ADHD brains. Mm -hmm. And that is the power of Rome. And I'm missing that right now in my journaling game. I write all this stuff down and, and, and I've just really gotten sloppy <laughs> uh, uh, about making sure I'm recalling all of the things that, that need further action, whether it's a mindset or a productivity item. And I would love to see more about your query system so that you, you, so that I can learn how to not miss the stuff that I'm dumping in there that my past self thinks is important enough for my future self to see. Yeah. Well, I think this is an idea I picked up from how to take smart notes where some Karen's writes always when you, put a note in your system, always think in what context you want your future self to re-encounter that note. So is it when you're writing something specific? Is it when you're meeting with someone specific, for example? Uh, like I, when, I have, when I'm catching up with someone, I'm, I'm that creepy guy who has a, like people uh, in his graph, you know, personal CRM. <laughs> and I taught, I, I can uh, uh, dig up what we talked about last time. So that is basically the, the, the context, for example, where I want to, uh, to find uh, when I search on someone's name. I use the, the dates function in this way, and I will get to the queries in a bit. But basically, 
linked references, I believe, is also like a type of query. Yeah. So I need to find the gather review back. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is how I use the, 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 the linked references. These are my to dos. I have a weekly page to plan my entire week. And this is basically what I first log into. So I have a, a note for myself. Uh, it's in Dutch. I'm going to close it quickly. A little personal. <laughs> I have an interstitial journal today, as you can see. I haven't had a musing today because I've been in calls all day. Uh, so, uh, but this is basically what I what I log into every morning. I might to dos. I make sure it's not too much. This is very doable. Like, and for example, I have the the, the smallest possible step. Uh, so, for example, here just a few steps like to get started. Um, sometimes I will also have here other to dos, which I then like. For example, for tomorrow. Maybe I have the to do send Rome stack newsletter. And then I tag it with tomorrow. And then I go to tomorrow and I have this. Well, as you can see here, I already have it. So I already have uh, a few references from my daily notes page, send Rome stack newsletter, but I've already set it up in, in Rome. With the publication dates, I've already triggered this template last week when I was already think started to think of of uh, of the newsletter. So this is how I use the linked references. Okay, hopefully not too confusing. How do I use queries? So again, I ask myself always: in what context do I want to see something? So for Rome Stack, I have one page in my graph with everything like all the content. That's why it takes a few seconds to load. I have a query set up and I, I realize I show this almost every live session I know, but the, I, I believe this is the most powerful way to use queries. You can do crazy things with queries. Simplest way to use it as it is as an inbox. So I have, again, a template set up that automatically adds this, these, metadata tags. So resource and Rome like newsletter. And then as I find stuff, I just simply go to my daily notes page. Let's say I find something cool. That someone shared on Twitter or in a newsletter. I have this template newsletter resource. Uh, let's say, uh, I don't know, journaling, recording, um, upload to YouTube on tomorrow. Um, and then for example, here I can do more to do's, uh, make thumbnail. So this is basically how I plan out stuff, what I need to do before I forget it. And I just think about in what context do I want to see it? Well, the first context I want to see it is in this query. Then I also have it in another context that I want to see it because I want to upload this recording on a specific date to YouTube. So again, if I go to tomorrow's uh, daily notes page, I see this to do for myself. If I have many things here without to do's, I can simply go to the filter. I can say, I only want to see the to do's. And then I see only the to do's. So this is one way to leverage your linked references. Uh, but how do I, again, how do I mostly use this? It's with a query. So it's Friday, it's time to write my newsletter. And uh, it's, uh, then I just pick from here, one of the re resources. On Monday, I have a similar process. I plan out, I have a to-do on my weekly uh, page. So let's go back. On my weekly page, I have a checklist with plan Rome stack content creation, check content roadmap. And actually I could make this a link. I'm not going to do it now, but I could. And I basically check this query, the content roadmap. 
where I have an inbox with a query setup. So here I have 26 content ideas for Roam Stack. Again, I tag this as it comes up. Well, I don't tag it. I enter this template and I just write down what comes to mind. So this is like five seconds to log an idea. I only need to have my the notes page open. And then as I start to write on something, uh, as I start to work on something, I just drag it to this ideas box. And this is just a, uh, a, uh, a Kanban board. But as you can see, all the context is here. So for example, here, I'm working on a draft and I have the context again here. I've written the draft in a Google doc. What is this? Three references. What kind of references? Oh, for my to-do list. So what I do is I actually grab the block reference of this, copy block ref, and then I say, I want to work on a specific, I want to work on this uh, article and I just have to double click it and I'm taken to the context. So hopefully this didn't flow fly over your head. It was, it was somewhat, you were somewhat able to follow this. But when we talk about context, use the links in, in Rome. So and make it, again, make it effortless. So instead of saying outline blog posts about effortless journaling, what 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 would I need to do then? If I read this to do, I would need to go to area slash Rome stack. I would need to scroll down. I would need to find the, the, the right block. Whereas if I have it linked, I can just double click it and I'm taken to the context and I can start working. So this is really one of the reasons why I like to link so much also to, to blocks, specific blocks and why having very specific contexts for workflows is so important. So if you have a project that you work on, have maybe a query set up where you can easily enter notes on your daily notes page and you know when it's time to work on your project, you go to your project, you first check your notes page and then see, okay, what do I need to catch up with first or what do I need to process? Okay, the hour is up. I've been talking a lot. I have shown everything that I wanted to show and a little bit more. And normally toward the end, I tend to give a little bit too much of information overload, especially with the last part. So hopefully you'll excuse me. Let's see in the chat. Um, there are questions. Um, Okay, Nick mentioned something important here, I think. He says, um, I almost never use any advanced filtering or queries, always seen them and think, damn, <laughs> then get bogged down by the implementation details. Yes, um, there's a lot, there are many videos available on YouTube about Rome queries and very complex systems, et cetera, et cetera. And I got bogged down as well. I used queries as search as most people um, promote queries. And then I thought, okay, but how, how do I know what, what things to include? And uh, uh, how, how complex can I make a query? And it's very confusing. And then I thought, this is not for me. I'm not a programmer. Um, I, I cannot be bothered writing very complex queries. So in what way can I use it? And I thought, well, I actually didn't think from the standpoint, how can I use queries? I just started to search for the same things over and over again, and then filtering on the same values over and over again. So for example, as you saw before, when I add something, want to add something to my newsletter, I have the hashtag resource and the hashtag uh, uh, Rome stack slash newsletter. And I would go, for example, to the Rome stack slash newsletter page and then filter on resources. And then I thought, but I can save 
this filter combination in a query. So that's basically how I came to adopt queries. And then over time, I noticed basically a query is, is a very neat way to, as a safe search. So instead of writing queries each and every time and uh, uh, create new queries on the fly the whole time, I don't think that's very powerful. I think it's more powerful to say, okay, you have a process that you want to revisit notes. Well, tag your notes with a specific combination of tags so that you can enter that in a query. And then you put on your to-do list to check that one query every week. And that becomes your revisiting process, for example. So that's how I use queries mostly. It's to support processes to, to save work, to already present me with all the information that I need to review, basically, and filter out all the noise. Oh, and I will share the code. Sorry, I should have shared the code in the chat of the smart blocks. And I wanted to show something else. Uh, I see there's still 14 people watching. <laughs> I wanted to show how you can auto automatically at night trigger um, uh, like workflows, but I'm first going to copy paste the code. Hopefully will fit. It will not fit in the chat. So we'll do it one by one. If that works, uh, this works. So these are three smart blocks. And then I'm going to add the interstitial journaling smart blocks. You should be able to just copy paste it from the chat into your own graph. And then these are the musings. Okay. And uh, if you're a, uh, if you're a Romstack member, just uh, send me your email address either here or in the Discord, and I will add you to uh, to this Rome graph, uh, Rome Suckers graph. Let me show you how to automate. Let's see, automate smart blocks. This is a smart blocks version two. Um, pretty powerful already, and it already works. Okay, so as you can see here, if I, I have smart blocks version two installed in my personal graph, this is my personal graph. Uh, there's a different trigger. So as you can remember, as you maybe remember, the smart blocks trigger is JJ, the of the version two, you can make you can decide what it is. Uh, I use XX. Um, and then what Basically, the, the coolest thing for me is, is this daily tab. I don't know why. Yeah. So what this does is first you need to enable it and it will write the settings in these blocks. So if, if you have smart blocks version two installed and you're going to set this up, don't delete this. What's here? Cause this, these are your settings here, these blocks. Um, and it will change according as you change this. So what, what this does, I have it enabled this daily workflow, the daily workflow will be triggered. Um, and then at what time, one minute pa past midnight, you can set that yourself. So you can say five in the morning or two at night, whatever. Um, and this is really cool because now I log in in the morning and everything is already waiting for me. I don't need to fire off this data template, which already is, um, is less friction. But this also is one of the reasons I have buttons instead of already the tags directly included on the daily notes page, because this will also run on Saturday and Sunday. Maybe I don't even open my, uh, my Rome graph on those days because I'm just being lazy as I should. And if I have the tags already included on the daily notes page, I will pollute my, my linked references. So just a hats up. So that's what I also wanted to show you. All righty. I hope this was useful. Um, not too messy. 
if there are any questions, I would love to hear it. If you want to share some of your own insights or how you do things differently, I would love to hear it. And if not, then this is the end of the, the stream. Yes, I hope it was useful. Um, again, if you if you want to talk more about this, uh, I think the easiest way to reach me is via Twitter. Um, I will put my two Twitter handles in the chat. So the first one is RR out, just my initials and my last name. And then I have Roamstack. So just send me a message. Uh, if you really like this, become a Roamstack member, obviously. So we have more sessions like these. By the way, what I've shown just now, and I completely forgot it, I am about to release an article uh, with basically what I've told you in this hour with all the templates. So what I've just posted in the chat, that will be in the article as well with some explanations as why I do make certain choices in my templates. Um, so if you want to read that, either have a have a look at the Rome stack blog tomorrow at the end of the day or even better sign up for the Rome stack newsletter it's free uh, one weekly newsletter no special offers no spam nothing just resources on Friday and you get you see you also see the new Rome stack content and you get notification about new events that I that I host Ah, Ken is joining today. Cool. By the way, um, the price will increase on Monday. Um, so it's now 79 euros a year. will increase to 149. Why is that? Well, I, I need to earn money. <laughs> and uh, second of all, uh, there will be uh, uh, self-paced courses uh, included in the membership. So I will sell those. Like September the 1st one will be released for, I think, I'm planning now for around 100 euros if you're a Romsec member. Um, so if you become a Romsec member now, it's 79 euros and you get the course for free. So I think that's a good deal. Um, if you think, well, I want to wait a little bit longer, fine. Um, I hope to see you in, in the Romsec community. And uh, if you cannot be bothered with that, just follow me on Twitter. I hope to interact with you there. Sign up for the newsletter. And uh, thank you for attending and your questions and sharing your experiences. So I just want to interject a little bit. Um, Ramses, you have a lot of really cool content coming. And, um, uh, and, and that's another reason why I'm proud of you for, for deciding to raise the price. Because what you've got coming is lights out, my brother. I'm so excited <laughs> for where Rome Stack is going. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, by the way, by the way, now that, now that I say it, uh, I'm also working with Tracy on something. So a journaling program. Um, and uh, if you want to know a little bit more about that, I've set up a page. Again, Tracy, thank you for the kind words. Really appreciate it. Um, so our, our lost my voice, we would already be doing this project now. I've slowed exactly. this down. Well, I, you have no control over your health, right? So um, it's just a reminder of what you can control and cannot control. Also, very good journaling exercise. Uh, I've, I've put a, a link in the chat, workshop.roamstack.com. So if you're into journaling, if you want to make journaling a practice, so Roamstack is really about just nerding out about Rome. Um, I, I'm, I'm uh, teaming up with Tracy to... Well, we'll use Rome, but it's mostly going to be about journaling. And we will be um, be sharing, like we'll be sending out emails, which already contain very valuable lessons. So even if you cannot afford an accountability program, or if you're not interested in an accountability program to, to cultivate a, a journaling habit, a practice, just sign up uh, for, again, you will be on the Rome Stack newsletter. You will get access to free events, resources, and you'll get email lessons. So I think that's already valuable. Um, and it's, 
I just love, and I think Tracy as well, we love to connect with people who are also in the same boat as us because we often talk about, oh, are we the only ones? Uh, like we sometimes say we're like twins <laughs> because we have so many shared experiences. But then I already read in a chat and Ken, for example, sharing his experience, I'm like, ooh, like we, the, the human condition, we all share this and we all struggle with the same things. And we all, like it's, the people here, we all see the benefit of journaling, but it doesn't come naturally. It's, it's we, sometimes we have to put ourselves to it to actually do it. And uh, Tracy and I, we, we want to help you all. Uh, cultivate a uh, journaling practice as we have cultivated it. Like I think Tracy seven or eight years ago, I started five years ago and it has helped us through several transformations. Um, and Tracy has her stories. I have my stories. So I wanna, will not bother you with that now, but it's very powerful. That's all I'm saying. Thank you for, for, for staying with me, even though I'm going over time, I tend to do that. So again, thank you. If there are no more questions, I'm going to stop the recording and I hope to see you soon.